there is a group of patients who have refractory migraine. And although people have argued about the definition of refractory migraine, if someone has tried and failed multiple treatments and is still having very frequent headache attacks, I would consider that refractory migraine. The question to ask in the patient with refractory migraine is why the headaches aren't getting better, and there are a number of reasons why that might occur. One reason is that you've got the diagnosis wrong. So if the patient doesn't have chronic migraine, but instead has another disorder that can be mistaken for chronic migraine, like new daily persistent headache or hemicrania continua, that's an important factor to consider. Another possibility is that the patient has more than one headache diagnosis. So occasionally patients will have both chronic migraine and another disorder, and it may be that you've successfully treated the chronic migraine but not the other disorder, and only by recognizing the other disorder can you formulate an effective treatment plan. A very common reason treatment fails is that there's an unrecognized trigger factor that the patient is experiencing. And far and away, the most common unrecognized trigger is some medication that's being overused. So doctors are very savvy about identifying overuse of prescription drugs, but caffeine-containing combination of ingredient products, for example, may make migraine refractory because as the caffeine wears off, that actually initiates the next headache. Another reason treatment may fail is that dosing of the preventive medication may be inadequate. So I will often see people who say, oh, I've tried everything, and then they will have tried such a low dose of a beta blocker for such a short period of time that it doesn't have a chance to work. So it's very important on the preventive treatment side to be sure that the trial of therapy was adequate, both in terms of dose and duration. When acute treatment fails, very often it's because the patient is treating too late. And to some degree, we induce that because we say to people, well, you know, you can't take this treatment more than eight times a month, and I'm only going to give you nine tablets a month. And so the patient waits to take the treatment until the pain is very severe. And it may well be if they had treated while their pain was mild, the headaches would have gotten better. But they wait and delay treatment, and then the treatment is ineffective, and we end up considering that a refractory patient. Finally, there are patients who have comorbidities that make the disorder refractory. So migraine, particularly chronic migraine, is highly comorbid with depression, with anxiety, with panic disorder, with bipolar disease. So recognizing the comorbid disorder and treating it is sometimes part of the pathway to get the patient from stuck in a refractory state to unstuck. What do we mean by refractory chronic migraine? Actually, a while ago, we, we did some investigation into the term refractory. <clears throat> if you're a general practitioner, internist, somebody who's refractory who may have failed amitriptyline, propanolol, and a triptan. On the other extent, somebody who's refractory for an insurance company may have failed three drugs and or Botox to get a high-end medication. So basically, why are patients refractory? Often they did not get the right drug for the right amount for the right time. Often they may be overusing narcotics or furanol or furacet. So you need to find out why they're refractory and how they've been treated. And those are the patients who we target for inpatient treatment. Migraine can be a horribly disabling and um, dislocating problem to a patient. It makes them unpredictable. Um, so I, I think it's important that lifestyle advice and the regularity of things. It's also important to uh, make sure patients are prepared for their attack. Um, I like to discuss with them things like premonitory symptomatology, prodrome symptomatology. Can you, can you pick when your attack is coming and getting the tiredness, the neck stiffness, the concentration problems, you're passing more urine. Are you, you, is your attack coming? If your attack is coming, don't have a late night. Don't leave your medicines at home. Don't skip meals. 
and don't expect, and, and certainly don't go chasing any alcohol. Know your disease and be prepared to combat it and you'll control your life better. So I, I say to patients, is you've really got to get a, at some level, get a, a grip on running the disease rather than letting the disease run you.